OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Welcome. Um, my name is Marie Dorner. I will do the introduction in a minute. Um, this, this presentation came um, at our last holiday party <laughs> where we were like, how have we managed for the last three years? Um, we, the three of us work with students with disabilities and um, for many people had said, never, never, never could we have done this online. So we thought we would share out what we did to um, work with our low level learners and our learners with disabilities. You know, do the next slide. Okay. <laughs> you should just be able to do the arrow, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, whenever you're ready, you can just come here. Oh, <laughs> you can just use that. Okay. All right, thanks. So I'm in the middle here. My name is Marie Dorner. I am the learning disability specialist for our school. I teach basic education. My students range from um, non-readers to people who have graduated high school but are not really ready for college. I have a really large class right now. I also teach creative writing. All right. Hi. Uh, do I need to go okay. oh, I'm Alicia Junan. I am um, working uh, for daily communication skills and I have, uh, I'm strictly online right now since COVID. Prior to that, I had a computer lab. Hi, my name's Joy Cole. I teach communication skills and it says slash communication devices. I don't teach communication devices. Um, welcome. Okay. Can I just tap it? Mm -hmm. Just, 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 So um, what we were hoping we, you would do was um, either aloud or in the chat, introduce yourself, your site, your program, and why you are here, what we can do to help you with. So if anyone in the, um, if you want to tell us maybe it, what's where you're from in the um, chat, if you want to share it, that's fine. Maybe, is anyone sharing? Not yet. So Vanessa said thanks, and I'm, let's give them a chance to type. So. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And maybe if you're interested, why are you here? Just those kind of questions. Just a quick hello. Oh, that's fine. Can I have a question? Just see. Look. <sighs> We're gonna. We'll go on to the next one and come back on that. How about that? Okay. okay, good. All right. All right, we'll talk a little bit about our campus. Um, so our school is the San Diego College of Continuing Education. We are here in San Diego, a bit north of here because we're in Chula Vista right now. Um, we have a really large school. We have seven different campuses all over the, the city of San Diego. Um, before COVID, we had 40,000 students. Um, so as of last year, this is 17,000 full-time, I mean, full-time students. Um, that was in the last year. 500 of those are registered with the disability support programs and services and receiving support from them. And so we work for the disability support program. It's 5% of our entire student body um, here in San Diego. We have many classes for people with disabilities, as well as offering resource support. So people who are in the, the regular classes can get support um, through a resource person. We also have access technology where students can get technology that would help them in their classes. For example, um, 
programs that would read for them or programs um, where they can dictate and, and um, get support that way. Um, so I don't know what the date was. It was March 15th, I think, or something like that, that we got the call, don't come to work anymore. Your classes are all there, but you're going to be online. Um, and so everyone threw up their hands and it was really just, how can we do this? Um, I work, per personally, I work um, from the campus. Um, my two colleagues here today work at a not at a off campus site in another organization's building um, and with that other organization so they can talk about that later but. Um, the first thing that happened was that, that our school already had an online course. Uh, 20 hour theoretically it was a 20 hour course that all teachers needed to take if you wanted to do online instruction it was already there and so it, suddenly it, everyone in the whole entire um, organization was mandated to take that course uh, personally I'd already taken it so um, back when we had Blackboard at that time we had Blackboard I'd taken the training and so I was kind of good to go, but I did take the new online course um, because we didn't use Blackboard anymore. And then there was a lot of supporting teachers through that. Um, so we really interacted and supported colleagues um, in order to figure out how are you going to get through all of the different parts using all these skills that people hadn't used before, like making videos and captioning videos and um, just trying to understand how is this resource going to support our students. Um, and, and we had, our school had changed to using Canvas. And so it was how to use Canvas and how to make sure you're um, being a good teacher in the way you're using Canvas. Um, and then learning all the bells and whistles of Canvas, or at least some of them. Um, okay. Next. Yeah, the last part there is really acknowledging everybody. I think the online um, component is really hard to figure out. Um, it's it's easy to look at the board. Like right now, I'm looking at the board, and all I see is words on the board. And, and how do we acknowledge that, yeah, there's people there behind the, the, the words and behind the board. And so really um, learning how to acknowledge students when you can't even see them or touch them or um, use the usual kinds of interaction that you usually use. So um, I think that's why we put that one there. It was really important to be participating. Okay, did we have anything in the chat? Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Um, so our biggest problem was getting into Zoom and um, sending out the link. Now for me, I, I had a, a Facebook page called, it was Basic Education with Marie. And so for a lot of my students, that's how they got the link. We emailed all the emails that the school had, but those were not accurate. So there was a lot of work behind the scenes with calling people with phone numbers and hoping they were online, still accurate, and then emailing people. What did you guys do? Um, as Joy and I, we both work at agencies, I would just send an email to the supervisor with my link and my schedule. In addition to that, um, I have students that join the Zoom that were not with the agency, and I had their email addresses and sent them the link directly. Right, and I know our brain injury program for a whole semester or two, did everything through email. They did daily emails and people were just getting, doing emails. So, um, 
the for my, for my class I, I teach a high flex class so it's kind of like this but we had people in I have people in person this week I think I had 13 people in the classroom with me and um it's hard to say because half of those people also zoom. so we um zoomed in a lot of people I had, I think I had 30 people in my class this week, and plus job coaches. Um, the etiquette, I think the etiquette is really similar to um, classroom etiquette is making sure that, that, the, that you have systems where the students understand that um, they are being nice to each other and that it's really an important part of life. Um, I think the hardest thing online is whether they're eating or whether they have their clothes on. I think there's been a few times where I had to say, you know, this, I, and and my, my line to my classroom is, this is a G-rated classroom. <laughs> if, if you could be in a G-rated movie right now, what would you look like? And then they'll quickly go, oh, because, I mean, I think people are online and, and they're in their pajamas or they're um, haven't put their shirts on quite recently. And um, so it's just talking to them in a, in a very respectful way. Um, Lane Austin uh, sort of introduced herself. If you wish to read it, I can just get to you. Okay. And perhaps you can interact with her. Oops. Can you just, uh, there we go. This is the uh, message from. Okay, Lynn, we're reading your um, chat right now. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to interact? I mean, we're very small and mighty. So um, if you have anything to say, you can unmute yourself and just join in because yes. um, we really just want to have a conversation with people. Well, thank you for joining us. And um, I think uh, we are going to have some tips for you in here. So you'll, you'll we have some resources. So stay in with us and we'll get to there for you. I'll stay in. Thank you. physics and I started as a physics teacher and then a math teacher before I moved into the disability field. Um, and, and the biggest thing that I found was that so many of the learners don't know how to interact. They they think they, they come and sit in the room. Magical learning will happen. So I think the important thing is to really help students understand that they have to be active to be learning the a brain that's idle will not learn. So the interactivity and getting students to be reactive and joining in the conversation and joining in is the most important part of learning. Any of our people with disabilities, we do just be trying to sit Or their disability is shining and people are like, oh, that's a bit weird. So um, interactivity is really you need to build it in at every That's your turn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So here's one of the, um, I'm hoping the video will work, but here is a video that when we talk about how do we get them ready. So, oh, thanks. Uh, this is something that from one of our OTAN, a DLAC two year program that I was in, this is what we developed my um, group. So go ahead. Uh, so no, oh, no. Did you hear what? No. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're trying to do this. Okay, so we're going to say All right. Oh. Mm 
Can you, can you all hear us? I think so. Okay, if not, looks like this is the one, right? I'm just going to make one adjustment. Go ahead. I don't know if you you know about. Ah. Yeah, it's okay. Go back. And then, yeah, it's okay. Would you like to change something? Oh, I just wanted to change the speed of it. Okay. It's pretty slow. It's really oh, it's really designed for. English is a second language people. So I really, I just wanted to let you know that um, one of the accessibility features is you can change, I would make it at two. I would go all the way down to two. Whoops. All the way down to two. All right, we're gonna speed it up. Go ahead, see. How come this, it looks like the speaker is off? It's your boss. This was actually a purple. <laughs> uh, when I listen to videos, any video, I'll, I'll put it on Google. For some people, slow is, is boring. Okay. You, I, I just, you can also slow it down to slower. Okay. Um, so you're trying. All right, so that is, um, we have a series that we do, and this is one, a really great one. Um, that was a lot of time and effort that went into that one video, but it is something that um, we do. Joyce says she uses it with her students. I use it with mine. It's something to kind of go over as far as the etiquette. We do have another one of how do you, as Marie was saying, how do you appear, your clothing, are you hunched over? We also talk about lighting is um, so these are quick little videos. I think it was two, two minutes long. That's a great little way of getting started to get ready to, to go on Zoom. So that was something that we used. I don't know how you move it Just right over here. Okay, you're next. Engaging students online. Okay, so um, we, we thought we would do some activities with you. Um, so one of the things that I do every week is word of the week. Um, so I, my goal was to really talk about phonics a little bit and also talk about word building and how many of our words, many of our multi-syllable words especially start from the beginning of a word. So I'll start with a word. So th this week um, we were, um, studying James Madison. Um, oh, this week we were doing James Madison. So I used the word mad, M-A-D. Um, the week we did this one that I'm showing you today is we were doing John Adams. So I took the D-A-M from John Adams. And then we said, well, what bigger words could we use um, that have the, the letters D-A-M in sequential order. 
We talk about um, it's um, it follows the syllabication rule that there's one vowel followed by a consonant, so it's the short vowel sound for the letter A. Um, not necessarily true when we put it inside of the other words, and then the students have to come up with bigger and bigger words. Um, so it's a really good way to have a multi-level classroom. I have some students who will look things up on, online and get bigger and bigger words. The only thing I require then is that they can tell me what the words mean. So we started with dam, um, talked about that dam is not always um, a, co uh, a word that, that you are allowed to use. And, and we talked about the, the other spelling for dam and what that what maybe would mean. Um, because I have a G-rated classroom, we didn't put that word on there, but, um, but then we have dams and dampness and good damsel. Um, I'm hope, we hope that this is a great another idea for you to use. I think, as you said, use it in whiteboard, but you could also use it on. Right. Yeah. So in Zoom, if you go to the whiteboard, you can just go to whiteboard I, and I just draw it live as we go. OK. And then then I also save it and then I put it as the banner for our Facebook page. So. All right. Here's the next one. Um, this is, again, our concept was engaging students online. That was a short, uh, we do it through short activities that build on learning. As Marie had more with words, now this particular one is an activity, it's named the object. And because my uh, students are um, not digitally, um, they're challenged. So this one is, again, going online. This was something that I made on Jamboard, and I had gone to one of these, um, a TDLS that had Jamboard in it. So, and I made a picture. I got a picture of a kitchen. And there's a couple things that I did. You can see I have the colors. The different numbers are in colors. So I have number identification. And what do you do with number two? Who can identify number two? Marie, do you know what it is? Coffee pot. Oh, coffee pot. Yes. Okay. Now let's say um, if I was to find a coffee, if I was to find a something to wash the dishes, what number would that be in? Or would you find it? Number five. Number five. There's, as you know, there's so many ways I can address this. I can make it easier. And then I would say, so let's say Marie is uh, nonverbal. Marie, do you agree with that? She would either give me a thumbs up, head nod, or whatever she can do. And that way I can engage her online and I can, I can, she can participate. So those are some ways that I also um, have changed things. And, and of course, I can also say, um, make it a higher level. Describe, give me an adjective, what color, what can you do at number six besides E? Someone might say, I might do my homework there. I might do my Zoom class. So I can, I can have more conversation, I can gear this activity towards um, the, my students. Again, this is done in whiteboard and Zoom, so that's something. All right, thank you. Oh, sorry, here's another one. This was another short activity. Um, again, we're building on learning, so this one is a scavenger hunt. I always thought, I was always intrigued when I hear people do scavenger hunts in the classroom. But when you're online, that's a different um, scenario. So I made my own sheet of what they can find. Now, so it was a desktop. But since we're in Zoom, I'm hoping everyone's going to be pointing it's right here. That's what I'm hoping. So <laughs> the other thing is maybe they're in an office where they have it and they can show it. Now, they wouldn't be bringing me a printer but they can describe it to me. Maybe Marie will say it's in the kitchen next to a cabinet. That's fine. A mouse or a touch pad. Now some students will have a mouse, some won't, but if not, they can say it's right here. It's kind of cool because a lot of my students will say it's right here. So it's kind of, they're engaged in, in this. And the other, I have another sheet that would say pencils, notebook, so again, just another way of making an activity kind of fun 
And you can also, um, I'm trying to get that language out. Or I want to write with something. Who can find me something on their desk or where they're at that you can write with? So that, again, write with categorization, hoping that they can find something, a marker, a pen, something. All right, so that's okay. just... There is a question. Okay, yeah, it's a question. Mr. Barry Bakin is asking, I'm interested in interested in the videos used to introduce basic technical skills related to using the various apps. Are they publicly available? Um, uh, the videos are if you have Canvas. We have that module ready. And you can email me. I uh, We'll have our address on here. We also have our um, uh, QR code for this. Yes. Thank you, Barry, for asking. Great question. Okay. Do you want me to help you with anything? Uh, not yet. Okay. I think I can do it. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, one of the things that was very, very important with working with my students is um, a, ma a majority of them have communication difficulties whether they're nonverbal, have unintelligible speech, need prompting to talk or to communicate and be active in the class. So students use communication boards and augmentative communication devices to, part to participate and engage in online learning. Um, go ahead, next slide. So um, this is an example. So this is a Super Bowl communication board and it was made by Board Maker. Um, and it's used for people, nonverbal, um, unintelligible speech, language challenges, and prompting. Um, this is sent to them and they are they use it during class. This particular board we were talking about the Super Bowl. And with this paper, low-tech communication board, the requirements or desire to communicate and a communication partner. So um, I'm gonna have, uh, just to show you an example, I'm gonna have Marie and Alicia, those are the only two people <laughs> that are in here, um, use these boards. Do you wanna see the next slide? No. Okay. No. So um, to, to use these boards, and um, so we're talking about the Super Bowl, and I say, Marie, who is going to the Super Bowl now? She has to have the desire to point to and tell me. And then she also has to have a communication partner, somebody sitting next to her telling me what Marie is saying. So, hey, Marie, who's going to the Super Bowl? A man. Ah, man, a man's going, who, what man? Is there a team? Is there a what team is going to the Super Bowl? The Eagles. Ah, the Eagles. Hey, Marie, who do you want to win the Super Bowl? The Chiefs or the Eagles? <laughs> she wants to win the bet. <laughs> Having them have a pictorial communication system. This can all this can be used for somebody, like I said, that's nonverbal, somebody that has difficulty um, with people understanding what they're saying, and then also um, people who um, speak um, English as a second language. So the pictures can help prompt um, the, the answers to the questions. And then there are um, people that do have speech. English is their first language. But um, they just need prompting to answer a question because perhaps they're shy, perhaps their processing doesn't allow them to 
um, to verbally speak it without a prompt of a picture. Um, the other thing, um, and we can go to the next slide. Okay. The other thing too is, I don't know if everybody can see this, but I also have students who use um, augmentative, oh, more? In front of these guys. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> uh, I also have students, let me turn this around so I can get to it, who use augmentative and alternative communication devices. Um, this particular um, device is an iPad with the touch chat communication app on it, and it's in a big get a big grips um, case. So um, I do have students that use uh, these types of devices, and uh, when I say to them, "Who do you want to win the Super Bowl?" they can tell me. Just cheap. The Kansas Chiefs, or um, hey, are you going to be having anything to eat um, during the Super Bowl? Yes. Ah, are you gonna? What are you going to be eating during the Super Bowl? Hamburger. Oh yeah, <laughs> me too. I really like hamburgers. So having the tools to be able to actively participate and engage in the activities is really, really important. So, um, and so next slide, please. Thank you. So in addition to um, using those communication boards and communication devices, or iPads with communication apps. I also work for a device lending and demonstration center located at UCP in San Diego. Now, the Ability Tools Device Lending and Demonstration Center is available throughout the state of California. So all of the devices that you'll see, plus many, many more, People can borrow these at the tap and access um, their computers to participate in Zoom or their iPads. So um, go ahead, next slide. So we have a whole lot of different um, devices that people are using. Um, yeah, you wouldn't mind. So um, Alicia, can you go ahead and... You go ahead and show this and this. Um, so the, one of the things that's really important for people to, um, can you see me okay? Okay. Um, is, you know, with the, with the keyboards, you can go ahead and take those out. With the keyboards, sometimes people that have visual difficulties um, need the keys a little bit larger or the, the, the keypad keys a little bit larger. And so what has been put on this just um, traditional keyboard or something called Zoom caps. These are stickers that can be put on the keyboards. All right. Okay. So also um, these are called key guards that's on this keyboard. A lot of time people have difficulty with isolating the, the keys. So one of the things that you can do, depending on your abilities, is you can, I can lay my hand on this keyboard and then I, I can stick my finger down there and then I can type into the chat what I may be able, um, what I may be asking. And um, the key guards come in um, metal covers and clear plastic covers. Next. Um, there's also um, devices called the Big Keys um, XL. They come in different um, 
uh, colors. So um, you could have like a yellow background, a white background, a black background. And then there's one that has um, the col uh, different colored keys. Okay, all right. And then um, I'll, this is a, something called a Chester mouse. It's a one button mouse. A one button mouse can be very instrumental in someone successfully using a mouse because it only has the left click on here. When you press the right click, you get a menu of things that um, you have an option to do. And sometimes that can get people in a lot of trouble. And so just having that, that left click can be very, very important. All right. This <clears throat> is the big track. Um, it has a nice big ball on it. It has two large buttons, um, oversized buttons for clicks. One of the things that I have found that um, people that use this particular uh, mouse, a lot of times when they're moving the mouse around or if they want to hit their left click or their right click, they move the mouse. So one, uh, so you're able to plug in switches. So after you move the mouse where you want it, you can press the switch so you don't have to reach over. Um, We have um, an, an enabler joystick. You can also um, use the switch instead of the button. One of the really nice things about the enabler joystick, I'm gonna show you two versions of it. This one just has the right click, the left click and lock, but you can use a joystick. A person may need to put a ball on here and grip onto the ball. And a T bar. And I'm gonna show you um, the one that's up there has a multiple function. So this one has the left click, the right click, uh, the click and drag on it, and also you can control the speed of the mouse. Also, you can plug switches in um, to control each feature if it's too difficult to press the button. Oh, Thank so because, um, because we are... Um, because we teach students with disabilities, one of the things by law that we have to do um, by Title V is that we have to have an academic accommodation plan for each one of our students. Um, and so this is the, the form. I mean, it's really complicated little <laughs> form, but we just thought we would show you because the question was really, how do we assess students? Because um, when you're in the classroom, the assessment is quite different from when you're Zooming with people. It's like, how do you assess them? So we thought we would share, first of all, this would be an example of the, the form that we're all, the method that we're already assessing. This was for, um, I don't know whose class that was. This it's was one. community living skills class. Right, do you want me to go back? Um, yeah, so go back. And so the, the questions are really, um, oh, sorry, yeah, <laughs> too far. Oh, yeah, too far. Okay. Um, so you can see on the form that the, the academic year was fall, spring, or summer. The educational goal was to improve computer um, communication skills to include increased language processing. Um, and it goes on and on. And then it's got the course objectives on there and our student learning outcome that we have to have. 
And then it's got the evidence of progress. Um, so you list out, oh, how did, how did you know that the student was learning this? The, the last column there, um, we, we were trying to match with the state um, progress uh, monitoring systems. The <laughs> N means that we had no evidence that the student in, in, um, increased in skill. The H was um, they weren't really there. So that's why they didn't progress versus N meaning they came every day, but they still didn't progress. Um, M was there was a little bit of in, improvement. S was satisfactory improvement and excellent. E was the, the student independently performed the, that objective. So we just wanted to share, this is what we were thinking when we were assessing students. Okay, then now we can go to the next one. So um, for assessing students, you really need to look at what's your objectives and then really define clearly how students meet them so that you can um, decide. And building a rubric um, covered that covers very basic to more advanced is good. I know my students are all at different levels, so it's a really individual sort of thing. So, um, but you could, I mean, the other classes that I work with have rubrics just in the general functioning. Um, Uh, most of our students are really focused on, are they able to follow the directions that the teachers give um, and self-discovery? What did you learn? I, I, a lot of the time I will um, either orally or um, in writing ask students, what did they learn in class? And then just keeping record of that so that they, um, that we know what they think they're learning <laughs> and then align that with the, what the teacher thinks they're learning and um, it, it makes for a good thing. Um, I had, you know, Nelson Sia said that she's the ESL teacher What's Contra Coast, uh, Coast Adult Education. I'm interested in information data on the effectiveness of teaching learning on Zoom for literacy level ESL classes. I would like to ask our program to add an online class for low level learners using Zoom. That's yeah, they can, well, hopefully uh, taking a look at what we presented, this will help. Um, I will include, she can contact me. We have, as I said, we've done a module of be low, uh, beginning learners. So contact me, it'll be at the end of the, and um, it's we've got some great information that we do. All right, so here, um, here are some of the really good things that we had said that we were going to provide for you. Websites to enhance and extend learning. So some of the resources we already have, some of you are probably using them, but we're, I just don't wanna, I wanna make sure we, I, I list it. So, so some of the things are the Google Slides, documents, the PowerPoint, YouTube, and Wikipedia. So those are some of the things that we use all the time, right? Probably you all know them, so that's good. So here's the next one. And then we also included some of the, so um, some of the questions were, are, where can we get the information? So in a, uh, I have the QR code, but one of the websites we use, we love Bamboozle, Canva, Edpuzzle, Jeopardy Lab, Factile Jeopardy, which is something that Marie just showed us. It was really very interesting. I think you all would like that. Give these a peek. This one, National Day with Mrs. Mrs. E. She's what, two to three minutes? She is uh, I, on, on YouTube on, or on Facebook. Yes. And she provides a um, just what's going on for the day, a fact of the day. And she has a little craft if you're interested. It's really nice. Um, news for you online. So it is a newspaper, newsletter type of thing. Yeah, it's a it's designed as a uh, newspaper for ESL learners, so you can get it to read. It is not free. It um, all the other things on the page are free. Um, you can use News for You free, but you don't get the whole thing. 
Um, like in my class, the day we spend one day, we spend an hour reading the news for you. I ask students, what do you want to, to read? Um, and it's actual news. I mean, it's um, the earthquake in Syria or the um, a bus for dogs in Alaska. <laughs> this, so I mean, it it's, also has current and, for, and also I have a teacher guide. So it's really a cool. And thing. it comes out once a week. Um, and then we also have read out loud books. I don't know if any of you have used those. Great. And window swap. So I think we've pulled up a couple of these that we wanted to show you. So this is the Canva. I know that right now this session, this um, TDLS is having a session on Canva. This is one of my one of the all time favorites. If you haven't had a chance to use it, take a peek at it. One of the things I like about it is that it already has um, fully licensed pixels, Pixabay, all of these already inserted in there. So you don't have any problem with um, researching, not click and drag. It's just, so I really appreciate that. Templates ready for you to go. It's super easy, even I can do it. So that was one. Um, and here's the window swap. Again, working on language. This is another one that, um, I circled it there, window swap, and this is a Switzerland view. So I would say some of the key components of this one is this day or night. What's the weather like? What do you see? Tell me what you see. Just kind of soliciting language. I'm trying to get language from my guys now. And maybe Marie's nonverbal. Marie, do you agree it's nighttime? Then she'd have to <laughs> say yes or no. It's hard to tell. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is hard to tell. But I mean, like, is it sunny? That's a tough one because look, the sun's out. Okay, so do you see stars? <laughs> now I can't change my question. So I actually I wasn't. So no, it's very cool, and and it's um, this is a live site, right? So you just can. It's you you can go all over the world. You never know. It's kind of like ham radio. It's like you click and boom. Oh, where are we now? Right. And it's um, really like it. And sometimes sometimes you get to see animals, so they they get all excited about that. Yeah. So anyway, that's one. And then this is one that um, Marie was talking about storyline. Just wanted to show you what it looked like. So in case you saw all those things, you could. Uh, is this the one where? Uh, yeah, the this is celebrity this is, reads. Yeah. So this is the SAG actors, the, the Actors Guild. So they're all um, big name actors. The only thing is that you need to be careful of age appropriateness. Okay. And so, but also I really try and encourage my students to read to their children and their grandchildren. And so in that case, this is really good because as they read, they see the words and um, they're just really excellent readers. Um, it's, and it's great. It's another form format for you. Okay. The the first slide that came up when I was talking about the device uh, lending and demonstration center, um, the link was to the local demonstration center. But this is the link to ability tools. There are ten device lending libraries and demonstration centers um uh, in california you can borrow from um and they will uh ship uh, the equipment to you you may be responsible for shipping it back but in the device lending library in san diego we have computer access which are keyboards and mouse options, iPads and communication devices. There's all kinds of different assistive technology available in the other uh, lending libraries. And I see I have double of, of there, sorry. All right, um, so here is some of you wanted to art, if you need information, there you go on that. Um, no, we have no time. To <laughs> All right. And then I think I have our QR code. Uh, okay, I just have our, there's our QR code. If, if you needed uh, information or it's there for you. So you I'll can access our, our Google, talk, our talk on from Google for any of our slides. Right. 